And there is exciting news in the fight against breast cancer. As scientists have made a groundbreaking discovery on targeting hibernating tumour cells. Now, this breakthrough offers promising prospects for patients with oestrogen receptor-positive breast cancer, the most common type. So joining me now to discuss is a GP and medical writer, Dr Rennie Hunderkamp. René, oh. Dr. René. Here again. Both in green. I know. Talk Very to me about this. Talk to me about it. It's fascinating. So this is really interesting. So all cells in the body are constantly undergoing damage or things that change them. So, for example, when you're pregnant and your breasts change, talking about breasts, cells undergo changes, but the body corrects them all of the time. So mm. we've got these T cells running around correcting problems. They've discovered that in women that have the gene for breast cancer, BRCA1 and BRCA2, that's also responsible for ovarian cancer as well. Mm. These T cells are exhausted. They don't work properly. Now, normally, we only see this in T cells in late stage cancer, where they've tried so hard to fight the cancer and, and mm. make it right that they are exhausted. But unfortunately, these women with BRCA have got them very early on in the, before they've even got disease. Mm. But that's quite exciting because in knowing that, we can then we hope, because we've still got trials to go, use the immunotherapies that we use late in cancer mm. to try and stimulate those cells. Use them early on in women that are at risk so that they never get cancer. And the exciting thing about that is, is that women with this gene that then don't have to have mastectomies, mm. which are emotionally and physically <coughs> damaging. Mm. They don't have to have their womb and uterus out because we can stop the cancer developing. So it is really exciting. And I think, my view on this when I read it was, the more we know about the genes mm. involved in cancer, the more than we can look for commonality amongst the people that have got that gene to see what it is that's driving it. And this is how they discovered this. So they looked at 800,000 breast cells from women who had the genes and discovered the thing that was common to them were these exhausted T cells. Mm. So now they can look for a solution to that. But what about the hibernating cells? Because these are ones where they think they got rid of the cancer, but then some of them lay dormant and they've not exposed themselves so they don't get killed by chemo chemotherapy. So they've found a way of getting them to express themselves early. So again, and it's all to do with the immune system and recharging it so that these things show themselves mm. and they can then actually just target them with these immunotherapies. I mean, immunotherapies are absolutely magical when they work, but we're still in early, early well, stages. What does it really mean when you're talking about immunotherapy because people hear that and you what, what does it mean so immunotherapy actually targets one particular cell and your immune system mm. is made up of hundreds of different types of cells who all have a different job most of them are interlinked and in these cancers things have gone wrong and you don't have enough of them or mm. you don't have the specific one so an immunotherapy drug actually stimulates your own immune system right. to find something on the cells and then kill I see. that cancer cell so it's your own immune system, not some external no. thing. So it stimulates. What if yeah. you've got an autoimmune condition? Because the last thing you want is the stimulation of the immune cells because they tend to attack you. They do, but we also use immunotherapy in autoimmune conditions by dampening down the cells that are attacking mm. you. So it actually is an immunosuppressant that then stops those cells that are causing your, you know, arthritis, you know, whatever it is, lupus, from actually attacking you. So they just use them in different ways to either accelerate or dampen down the, the cells that are going rogue. So, so they can target specific cells mm. within the immunotherapy. And turn them on or turn, turn them off. Turn some on and some off. Mm. That's impressive, isn't it? It is impressive. But it's individual tailored medicine. That's going to take time, isn't it? It's going to take time. It's also going to take people to feel happy enough to give up their genetic information mm. to be looked at. And I think for some people, even me to a degree, for some people that's still a bit of a scary issue, not because you don't want this kind of advance, because you wonder what else people are going to use it for. Mm, that's true. It's always the way, isn't it? We find something good, then we do something bad. Dr Rennie Hunderkamp, thank you so much for talking to me about that. Pleasure.